Well, 12 years ago, it was exactly the time today when I was in a war and I was dreaming on how to survive. 12, year, 12 years ago, exactly the same day, was when the NATO started to strike again, uh, strikes against Yugoslavia to stop the genocide against Albanians. And I was dreaming these days, days on how I will be able to survive. And on my dream, I saw also something, I saw the future. And I kind of in my dream saw that I will speak at TEDx workshop 12 years from then. And that in future, I also found this really interesting detail that the, the slides are illegal in the future. And if you use bullet points, that also will be uh, uh, how many bullet points you use, that will be that you will send this to, to prison, uh, an amount of numbers that you use. So you can see, like, I'm not using any slide because I'm here to tell a story on how this dream of survival came to me, and then I, I, I was driven by the, by the passion on, on solving my country. And I happened to be in the recent years, visiting many laboratories around the world, and uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be studied as to start part of my education to finish in Sweden, where, we, where the education is really high. And among them, I also was at CERN, which is a laboratory where the World Wide Web was invented, which, on which today TEDx workshop can be streamed all over the world. And I was so passionate after one person, and his name is Tim Berners-Lee. What he did, in early 90s, he discovered the, inter the, the World Wide Web. And he just didn't discover it and commercialize it, which any corporate would do. He just took it, this idea, made it happen, and launched it online for free. And then now we are connected thanks to him. He's really a passionate uh, a, a, a figure which really passionates me. But so after I go to, to, to Scandinavia to finish my education, I, I go back in my country and I decide that uh, something has to be done. And my country was just recently out of the war. You have the economy shattered, you have unemployment more than 50%. And what do we do about it? And knowing to be able to be employed in, in a country like Kosovo is really hard because you need two skills to have. And one is you need to be really good in English, and another one is computing. And you have like jumping of training centers for English courses and training centers for computing and charging extra amount of money for people to, to finish. And, and it was really nonsense because in a way it was a gateway to get employed, but in, in other way it was like uh, technology was existing, but it was not affordable for, for the majority of people. So I started to develop this, this idea of putting a curriculum together and writing more than 500 pages together with animation, together with an awesome team I, I felt passion with, and launched it for free. And this really put a bigger milestone because when I was approaching the government, they didn't like the idea because it was too big. And I said, but my dream is too big, so I want to make it happen. They said, like, you know what? We have mo any other problems. I mean, the, the, the political status was in limbo and everything. So, what I did, I kept going, and I kept motivating people to do this because it was good for the country. And then, as the, the current government was like rejecting me, I started to hang out with a professor on which he was in opposition, and if, he, if he's going to be elected, he will be the next Minister of Education. So I invite him to, to see the, the process we are going through. We, we spent like nine months coding all the platform. And then after, I promised him, like, if you, if you become a minister, I will walk in your door and I will give it to you so you can spread through the entire country. And the coin flipped it in the right side, and uh, the, he, he got to the office, I, I go after him, and uh, he nationalized it. So now every kid in every school in Kosovo that has internet access opens to this platform and have free access to education. And then once the education portal was really growing, then the other problems started to appear, such as you start receiving phone calls from the private companies, like you're really uh, attacking our, 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 our industry, you're really like what you're trying to do. Some of them, they were trying to take this uh, free online portal of education and start to charge people money from it. And all of the, this started to happen. So uh, I was really like uh, trying to, to bring the government to be able to, to secure it, but then I found out like, the government can change, and still the guys can be all in charge, and someone can cut it off. So I took the administration rights, which I still do it till today, and uh, I still manage it, but it's always under public domain. So I kind of did this, and through all this story, in the, back in 2008, in the convention of the European Commission, they awarded us for the best practice award 
of the most influential technology per country. And that was a big dream that which happened. And, uh, and later on, we were uh, incubating some other ideas on how to bring the web into the, in the classrooms on which uh, I'm working at the moment. And in a small, sh long story short, because I have only like a limited amount of my time here, it's that one powerful idea that you have on how you can change the education as a previous speaker was mentioning, like you need to think big. So we did think big. We did a lot. We never gave up, and it, it could happen. And it could happen in, not only in the United States, not only in the, in the Western countries. It could happen also in the countries that were just uh, in a new democracies, and they are just uh, ready to, to walk in its feet. So what we are doing now, we are letting these young people to be access, to be digital as much as they can by providing them an open and free connected web to them. Thank you.